This video was brought to you by The Ridge. Watch until the very end to find out more. When people ask me what my favorite variant of Ichigo is, it always comes down to full bring Bankai Ichigo, and Ichigo when he steps out of the hyperbolic time chamber, better known as Dongai Ichigo. From the new hair design to the improved physique and his chain covered arm that has become fused with his Zanpak toe. The training and things needed to reach this level of power too are also very particular to Ichigo only, which also adds more mystery to the form itself and its true level of power. This form has always just felt so different, strong, and cool as f It almost feels like it's from a different manga due to how different Ichigo feels to his allies. He truly feels like he's in a different echelon of power to the captains. He has a certain presence that just feels really powerful. It's honestly a great example of the butterfly effect, especially in Bleach, because these minute changes have led to such a drastic change in power. The sensitive dependence on initial conditions in which a small change in one state of deterministic non-linear system can result in large differences in a later state, i.e. Dongai Ichigo. Born with an extremely strong prototype hollow inside of him, which would easily be classed as a vasto lorde and beyond in power by the Soul Society. His very own mother, a purebred Quincy, and extremely strong at an early age. With a father from a royal household that also has insanely strong spiritual pressure for a Shinigami. As Ichigo gets older, he meets Ruki Akuchi, a 100 plus year old Shinigami, which leads to him having his powers activated, and this only happened due to her willingness to break the law and not allow Ichigo to die like Kai and Shiba did. Also, Aizen Loki was involved with that. Ichigo then gets trained by one of the most intelligent characters in the story. Then he gets trained by his Quincy and Hollow Asuchi passively in battle, who is also a physical manifestation of Yuha Bark. Has a short rivalry with Renji Abarai. Then gets trained by one of the fastest characters in the story. Has another short rivalry with a royal blooded, highly skilled captain that helps motivate and develop his powers in both training and battle. Later gets trained by ex Shinigami captains and lieutenants, who have Hollow powers just like he does has a longer rivalry involving multiple battles with two monstrously powerful Esparta that develop his abilities even more with each encounter, is being groomed by the two most powerful villains to achieve higher levels of power since he was born. After every near-death fight in the Soul Society arc and the Hueco Mundo invasion, he returns even stronger than before, and he even got hyped up by the previous Kenpachi. To go back to his father, well, he is a high-level captain from a royal bloodline who teaches Ichigo a technique that trains and combines his powers with the two other beings inside of him into a pool of insanely high spiritual pressure. And with a special place to train, which only appeared due to Aizen destroying the cleaner while testing out his new alien-esque powers, Ishin holds open this area known as the Dongai for three straight months so Ichigo can achieve this higher level of power, their only chance to defeat Aizen. All of these specific, domino-like interactions and lucky access to unique training, plus being born with two extremely strong beings inside of him, royal blood from his mother and father, well, this makes his Dongai form not only incredibly strong, but a ridiculously peculiar combination that only Ichigo was able to reach, unlike all other Shinigami shown thus far. While Aizen has gone through a rather similar evolution of power unique to only his situation, the Ichigo we see before us has undergone a transformation in both body and mind that casually surpasses this. To put it into perspective, it's wild to think that the narrative of the story is hyping up the full hollow transformation of Ichigo to be a challenge to this form of Aizen here, and arguably this form here with a certain chains of argument. An interesting thing that I noticed while rereading Ukiora vs Ichigo was that the only thing that the people below the canopy of Lost Noches can actually sense is Ukiora, up until the very moment that he passes. However, throughout the entire battle with the Vasu Lode Ichigo, the only time they notice him up there is when a Cero breaks through the canopy of Lost Noches. It would seem pretty consistent to state that White right here could actually have transcendent levels of power, because once Ichigo is healed and he is only in Bankai and Holification, he is then able to sense Aizen's transcendent spiritual pressure. Dongai Ichiro, on the other hand, is so powerful that according to Aizen, in his last evolution with the Hogyoku, which is three levels stronger than his forms that surpassed all Shinigami in his own words, well, Aizen says verbatim that he cannot sense Dongai Ichigo throughout their entire battle, and the only reason he inflicted any significant damage to Dongai Ichigo was because of Ichigo's mental state at that time, which led to Ichigo playing with him and mocking him all the way up until the release of Mugetsu. 
Ichigo didn't even defend himself from the Fragor attack from Aizen, which is also directly proven by the fact that he can then casually do this. It also makes zero sense for the Vaso Lorde form to be anywhere near Dongai Ichigo's level, as Dongai Ichigo is the fusion dance between Zongetsu, White, and Ichigo, plus it also has training stacked on top of it and no restrictions, hence why it took so long for Ichigo to be able to communicate with his Zanpak Toe again after the Mugetsu was fired. He used up all of his power with that final swing. The Dongai form itself is his Bonkai state going through rigorous training for three straight months, becoming transcendent, one with his sword, and having access to all of White and Zongetsu's power. To get technical here, it isn't even technically a new form, it's just his Bankai with special training, and the Mugetsu is the new form. The statement that Zongetsu later makes about Ichigo not being restricted here doesn't seem to apply to Dungai Ichigo, but more so to Ichigo in battles like these. To put it into the most direct, blunt way to show you how strong Dongai Ichigo is, well, Shunsue here on the screen isn't any different to when he fights here, and could be argued to actually be nerfed upon the release of his Bankai due to having a missing eye from his battle with Robert. Even when releasing his Bankai against the X-Axis, he does this after taking so much damage that he is on the verge of dying, but we already know Dongai Ichigo is far above Shunsue and this form of Aizen here, who surpassed all Shinigami and couldn't be sensed by Ishin, Urahara, or Yodoichi. To go even further with the logic behind this argumentation, I would like to assume that any sane person would not say that Aizen here is weaker than this Yamamoto here. This is also backed up by the fact that Yuha Bark does not believe that this Yamamoto here is stronger than this Yamamoto here, and he goes so far to say that, hey, if you did in fact get healed, I would have considered you a war potential. This would also make sense why the manga tries to imply Ichigo is regaining the powers he had against Aizen, but even then, that's debatable and weirdly translated. I had no plans to mention this as I've covered this stuff so many times in previous videos, but I'm always shocked at how many people find it so hard to follow basic storytelling in relation to Dongai Ichigo versus the hollow transformation scene in the Ukiura fight. This one here is the full hollow transformation with half of his Shinigami powers. This one over here is Ichigo, his Shinigami powers, Quincy powers, and that full hollow all in one form, plus they trained for three months straight. Cool does not always equal power, or Levi from Attack on Titan would be slapping everybody's ass in anime. When Ichigo arrives in Karakura Town to confront Aizen, he has gained the ability to sense Aizen's spiritual pressure in his transcendent states, which is something that Yodoichi, Urahara, and Ishin cannot do. This appears to be a direct result of the Vaso Lorde transformation, which changes Ichigo's mask pattern, and the author Mr. Kubo draws the Shinigami badge being overpowered at the end of each chapter of the battle with Ukiora. The horse has now become the king. From not being able to even pierce Ukiora's spiritual pressure in his first release, to being able to sense transcendent Aizen. Quite the leap in power. Either he has become over 100 times stronger just by being healed, or he now has a higher ceiling of spiritual pressure detection, which I personally believe is more so the case. Ichigo's best feat in this form is making Gein bleed, and shocking Unahana when they're in the Garganta. Though I personally wouldn't debate that this Ichigo could be Unahana. Upon further inspection of the manga too, I've noticed that the badge argument is one of the most overhyped aspects of the entire series, with Ginjo placing more emphasis on the fact that Ichigo is being spied on to gauge his reaction, rather than the power nerfing parts being a pivotal point. It seems White was messing with Ichigo's power throughout the entire series more than the badge was, in truth. That's why I believe Ichigo mostly just gained a higher ceiling of power to ascend to instead of actually somehow going from Bankai to second release Ukiura just from being healed. I'm actually planning to cover that very specific subject in one of my future Bleach videos, so make sure you're subscribed to see that video. So I think we all know by now that the mountain feat is an incredibly funny one whenever people reference it in power scaling content or debates regarding Bleach, as it's obvious Aizen is hyping up that it's cool how he can just casually vaporize mountains with casual swings of his sword and create canyons 
just from the force behind said swings. But if you do think that the mountain cutting feats and the arguments that some people have towards implying this is sort of like the peak of power in Bleach, if you think that that holds any merit, then you are conceding Grimjow and the other Esparta have more firepower than Aizen in this state, as Grimjow in his base form almost destroyed Lost No Shares with a Gran Rey Cero. Ukiora can throw his Lanzado Relampago, which dwarfs Lost No Chairs easily, it's even drawn that way in the manga. And Aizen in his base, slash Shikai is stated stronger than all Esparta by Gein. And Mr. Kubo even has Gein explained in the manga that, hey, the Esparta don't follow Aizen because they fear his Kyokusoi Getsu's hypnosis. They follow Aizen because he is just that much stronger than all of them put together. You could say, oh Clyde, but we're talking about swings, not explosive or projectile abilities here. Alright, that's fair enough, but the point is that Grimjow almost destroyed Lost No Chairs in base by accident. Keep that in mind. Unless you believe Kenpachi here in just Shikai is stronger than this Aizen here, who scales above Yamamoto, then he should also be able to slash meteors this large casually. The better feat that I wish people would use is how when Aizen transforms beyond the chrysalis stage of the Hogyoku, he can wipe the cleaner from existence with a mere glance, which is a being that all Shinigami fear can knock you through time just by connecting with it physically, and doesn't obey the laws of physics or spiritual pressure, but actually the idea of reason. Aizen casually performs this feat in this form here, however Dongai Ichigo cannot even be sensed at all by the alien looking transformation of Aizen, which is two forms stronger. Aizen also doesn't seem to fear the idea of fighting individuals like Yamamoto anymore like he once did, and boasts again about surpassing all Shinigami. It was even stated that his planning went so far that he had plans to become immortal before fighting Kenpachi too, and kept him trapped in Hueko Mundo alongside Unahana with Yami and Ukiora. It was very clear he had prior knowledge of Kenpachi's hidden power, but again, his opinions had clearly changed on these things once he had transformed with the Hogyoku. Yamamoto is also famous amongst the Soul Society for having the most powerful Zanpak Toe, so even if Aizen did not know the specifics of Yamamoto's Bankai, Wonderwise was without a doubt made in advance to make sure that this Zanpak Toe would never release its Bankai. It's very clear that Mr. Kubo wanted to really emphasize to us viewers that Yamamoto's Bankai and his Zanpak Toe in general is a really big deal. In the Soul Society arc, it's listed as the most destructive Zanpakuto of them all. Aizen does a lot of pre-planning to just specifically avoid his Zanpakuto ever being released. And then one of the first major things to happen in the War arc is Yamamoto releasing his Bankai, which shocks even people at the level of Unahana. Various data books also infer that what I said about Aizen is true, and there is a famous data book page from Bleach Unmasked, which claims the Mugetsu was the most potent thing in the Bleach universe at that time of the story, and this narratively makes sense when you read pages like this. In the second official Bleach data book known as Mast, this data book states that with the release of the Sokyoku, its power overwhelms everything in existence and has the power of over 36 million Zanpakuto. Shinji also claims Ichigo's power has gotten so strong after his adventures in the Soul Society arc, his spiritual pressure has the power to echo across the entire planet, and obviously, Dongai Ichigo is far, far, far more powerful than this Ichigo. I usually prefer to stick with just the manga and the supporting data books because they're kind of the most consistent material for Bleach, but according to the author, Mr. Kubo, he kind of approves of the first Bleach movie, and to my knowledge, there is some pretty decent, like, planetary scaling in that movie, so if you guys want to debate that in the comments go ahead but I'll, I'll just mention it so people don't get bothered that I don't mention it. Also by the way underrated movie that's my favorite Bleach movie the first one is actually written amazingly. In the raw Japanese manga Aizen states his Kurohitsugi has the power to bend time and space when performed by a transcendent being such as himself then atomize Ichigo with it and Dongai Ichigo casually backhands that thing with zero difficulty Yet a much weaker form of the Kurohitsugi was actually used against Sajin Komomura in the Soul Society arc, and it disabled him in one single blow. I believe Mr. Kubo was attempting to describe some kind of pseudo black hole science comparison here, but that's really up to how you interpret it as a reader. Regardless, it's a great feat for Ichigo, especially if you want to add any validity to what I said about the black hole. Although not confirmed in any source material or data books to my knowledge, Aizen is showcased using a reforming technique which may actually be instantaneous teleportation. 
This can be used for long distance travel, like when he teleported to Gein's location and ripped his arm off, then proceeded to stab him, and is a great feat for Ichigo, because he is able to react to and parry blows from Aizen, who teleports behind him. If you think light speed feats in Bleach are cool, this is much, much more impressive. Shinigami of Gein, Ichimaru, and Kaname Tosin's level from the Soul Society arc are also shown using teleportation Kido very easily, along with time manipulating Kidos and many other types. So this isn't out of Aizen's capability, considering he can easily cast said Kidos without incantation. This kind of works in a similar manner like how in Naruto, high level shinobi can whip out Jutsu without weaving hand signs. A pretty cool fact about Zongetsu is that the blade actually has an invisible chain that extends quite far, and this is why during the Ukiora battle, White can summon the blade towards himself when many believe it was just some type of spiritual pressure force type ability, similar to what, you know, Jedis and Star Wars do. As Ichigo becomes further fused with his blade, he becomes one with his Zanpakuto, thus making the chain more visible. Along with this, Ichigo appears to have gained sensory perception that far surpasses his original ability to detect soul ribbons from a huge distance. Or as another example, midway through the story when Ukiora breaks out of the Kaha Nagashion and gets direct orders from Aizen to, yo, take care of Los Noches, Ichigo can instantly sense when he appears from across Los Noches. And to go back to the ribbon detecting feat, well, this impressed Rukia quite a lot at that time. But now though, when he steps out of the Dongai with his father, he just stands there, he casually looks around and scans all of Karakura Town, and he can locate his sisters in a mere moment's notice. I also want to make this a note in the video, which I also did note in my Mugetsu video, is that Aizen's plan was to chase Tatsuki and all of Ichigo's friends all around Karakura Town until he got bored. Then he was going to slaughter them and hang their bodies all around Karakura Town so that once Ichigo found them, it would develop his powers even more. Can you imagine if that was the first thing Dongai Ichigo seen when he stepped out of the Dongai? To put it into perspective as to how strong Dongai Ichigo truly is, he could casually 1v10 all of the Esparta, and they would never land a single blow. I also gotta say, I do find it quite funny, very similar to the whole mountain feet being completely blown out of proportion, when people will legitimately misread the manga, and they'll say, oh well, I mean, Ichigo discarded his spiritual pressure for physical strength when, in actuality, Aizen was so confused by the form because he had no idea that Ichigo had been training in the Dongai as it was, you know, sort of happening in three months while in real time only minutes were going by, if not maybe a couple hours, that when he finally met Ichigo and he couldn't sense him, his only logical conclusion to rationalize Ichigo flashing towards him, grabbing him by the face and slamming him into the ground was that he surely must have discarded his spiritual pressure for physical strength so he could stop combating Aizen's ridiculous spiritual pressure. That example there, and the 5D example that Aizen states, the fact that Aizen is reacting that heavily to how strong he perceives Dongai Ichigo to be is way more impressive of a feat to me than say Ichigo swinging his sword and wiping away an entire city. While in his Zanpakuto's inner world, Ichigo spends around three months inside there, training non-stop, with Keigo even commenting that Ichigo has gotten taller when he returns. This is truly a huge testament to Ishin's power, being able to hold open the Dongai for around this time, and Ichigo also having the stamina to fight in there for this amount of time. This also does correlate to fighting in real time, as many would probably try and dispute. They would say, oh, well, in the Zanpakuto world, it, you know, it acts a little bit different than the real world, but he actually sustains cuts, which appear on the outside, Side and, you know, Ishin does keep open the Dongai for three months in real time, so those two things do correlate with one another. Those two could technically fight for three months straight. Think about that. At the start of the Aronka arc, Ichigo remarks to Shinji that he has enough stamina at the start of the arc to actually run for five days straight without stopping. And Chad can also fight for multiple days on and off with no problem. To be able to fight for that long, while his father is holding open the Dongai long enough to allow Ichigo's training to go smoothly to the point where he is dying, it's no wonder as to why Ichigo was so absolutely livid with Aizen. Aizen is slaughtering the Shinigami one by one, his friends are being hunted, Aizen has been psychologically messing with Ichigo since he was younger, and countless others that he cares about. Aizen states he will return to devour Ichigo, and is constantly trying to groom his powers further and further without his consent. Aizen hints at secrets about Ichigo that he doesn't know anything about, and his only parent almost dies for the sake of his training. To save everyone. Even individuals like Urahara, the Visards, and Unahana are counting on Ichigo to defeat Aizen. 
Yamamoto is even later so grateful towards Ichigo that he even reinstates Ichigo's powers, which that in itself is against the law of the Soul Society. Think about this to really put it into perspective. Yamamoto was willing to fight his unofficial sons to the death without even hearing them out, just to uphold the laws and justice of said Soul Society. The very boy who fought against the system has garnered the respect of the system. It's sad to say, but many do not pay attention to the nuanced details that the author places into the story, as with each passing battle, Ichigo shows that he is developing a level of depression, which has come about since the end of the Soul Society arc, where a boy once filled with hope and determination is now filled with disappointment and a sense of despair, a sense of uncertainty, a sense of uncomfortableness. A lot of this begins when Ichigo becomes doubtful that he can stop White from taking control at any moment. And this is slightly paused when he is taught by the Visors how to use holification. These major changes are heavily highlighted after his unconscious battle with Ukiura. Sky-high buildings to submerge suburban homes. These changes are the antithesis to Ichigo's initial character. Ichigo feels sickened upon the idea of finishing his fight with Ukiura, who has now become a mutilated cripple. Ukiura remarks that even in death he cannot get Ichigo to do what he wants. Ukiura being a character who revolves heavily around his nihilistic traits, and his lack of understanding as to how humans work. An unfathomable perception of hope in a dark and lonely world. The monkey reaching for the moon of understanding. Their battle finishes in a very bittersweet way. A character dies upon learning the heart, the other leaves feeling like he is not truly a victor of a battle he fairly won. After this ordeal has concluded, Ichigo has a conversation with Yami, to which Yami speaks in a very disrespectful manner about his fellow Esparta teammates. Ichigo, someone who risked even his own life for Grimjow, cannot comprehend these selfish words. And due to feeling compassion for those he has fought in the past, as he learned about them in their battles, this makes him want to annihilate Yami. Rukia notes that the expression on Ichigo's face has visibly changed. He is not the boy that saved her on Sokyoku Hill, but a boy who has fought many unnecessary battles, experienced things that truly disappoint him to his core. This change in Ichigo's character continues to be showcased throughout the story and is even noticeable to Gin Ichimaru, stating the look in Ichigo's eyes is drastically different to the point that even he is disappointed in his mindset and the things he says. When Ichigo is later given a pep talk by his father Ishin, he is confronted with the cold truth that if he does not take action, all of his friends and the people he cares for will die. This leads to his three months of training with his Zanpakuto to learn. The final, gets a Tensho. Considering he went from seated officer to captain level in basically three days, three months of isolated hardcore training, and leading to being this strong with the assistance of his father, it kind of makes sense that he reached that power so fast. When Ichigo arrives, he has a sense of maturity and calmness, eager to take care of things, eager to protect his friends. He makes it clear he wants to end things quickly, and even forces Aizen to a remote location where no one is around, with the famous hand to the face scene after Aizen's response to his initial proposal to relocate their bout. Throughout their battle, Aizen is faced with the shocking reality that he has absolutely no idea how Ichigo got so strong all of a sudden. Just hours ago, Ichigo couldn't even compare to his base form, and Aizen even misunderstands what is happening before his very eyes by thinking Ichigo has discarded his spiritual pressure for physical strength. As Aizen starts to feel Ichigo's presence in battle, Ichigo remarks that it's interesting how Aizen tried to move away, as this is something Aizen was mocking Ichigo for earlier. Strike after strike, the battle is going Ichigo's way. In fact, it was always Ichigo's way. Ichigo allows Aizen to grab him after he takes the Fraggle at point-blank range, to which he then mocks Aizen again easily slapping away his floating rings. Is this all you got? Let's not waste any more time. Aizen, I'm sick of your crap. Ichigo has had enough. He wants these games, this terror, this uncertain end. He wants it all over. With Aizen in absolute shock, he witnesses before his very eyes the transformation of the Mugetsu. A form so strong that Aizen, who still can't sense Ichigo's Dongai form, claims that Ichigo must be in an entirely different dimensional plane of power to him. With a multiplier of power so high it's almost impossible to accurately work out, he defeats Sosuke Aizen in one swing. 
It really is so peculiar to think that Dongai Ichigo was debatably the strongest Shinigami at this point in the story, and was so much stronger than Aizen by far. However, due to Aizen being able to transform so much with the Hogyoku and being immortal, he had to use his magnum opus to absolutely make sure Aizen was defeated. Although Ichigo can't stay in his Mugetsu form forever, he technically could have stayed in his Dongai form. The series would be drastically different if he somehow won without using Mugetsu, because Dongai Ichigo far surpasses the Ichigo that fights Eburn and Huilga. It's very clear that what was happening in this battle is that because Ichigo was taking so long, he also knew that eventually Aizen was just going to keep transforming with the Hogyoku anyway, and you can clearly see by his reaction to when Aizen comes back, that he truly did think that the Mugetsu would have been enough. So the fact is, he probably thought, yo, my Dongai form, I'm clearly much stronger than him right now, but he's probably gonna survive whatever attacks I have, and he's gonna come back anyway. So a lot of people say, Clyde, Ichiro clearly didn't need to use the Mugetsu, and yeah, in truth he didn't. He could have just bullied Aizen all day, but what would have happened is that Aizen would have eventually transformed again and again and again, and he was about to do that, but because the Mugetsu made him so weak and he was taking a long time to get his power back to what it was because all his spiritual pressure was gone from regenerating. That's when Urahara's Kido came in and sealed him, so it was just perfect timing. Though, I did say this in my Mugetsu video, I just wish he did a single Getsuga Tensho. Can you imagine how big his Getsuga Tenshos would have been in his Dongai form? Like, they covered the entire sky in the full ring arc when he got his powers back, but imagine if Dongai Ichigo was like, gets a Gaten show and he just like, I don't know, blew Aizen into space or something like that, that would have been mental to see. I hope you all enjoyed this video. This video took me three weeks to edit, and I actually had this planned for months. I've, I've been sitting on this script for months, perfecting it, going back, cleaning it up, making sure it was perfect, showing it to other people so they could proofread it and, you know, maybe remind me of something I may have forgotten and most people seem to like it. I feel like this is a really just clear cut, definitive Dongai Ichigo video. If I managed to entertain you all the way until now, please just do me a small favor. It's free. Physically click like on the video and subscribe if you're new to my channel. It would mean a lot. And also, Go check out my other Bleach content. A lot of my videos that are, you know, around that one hour mark, like my Stark video, I work very hard on those videos. So go check them out, please. And I also want to say before I end off the video, two things. A big shout out to the Goat Marino for commissioning this video. Go check out his links below. And before I end off this video, I just want to thank The Ridge for making this video possible, the official sponsor of today's video. Through my many years on Earth, I've used all kinds of wallets, various things to hold my physical cash or cards, but nothing like what these guys have. I've been a fan of Ridge Wallace for a while now, and when they reached out to want to get onto one of my videos, I instantly said yes, as I actually respect the quality of their products quite a lot. They're so good that anyone could use them. Basically, the perfect gift. When it comes to their amazing wallets, the Ridge has over 30 different colors and styles you can choose from, and their wallets hold up to 12 cards. But one of my favorite new things they have is the key case. The key case is amazing. Super simple to use, set up, and looks fantastic. I also really want to emphasize just how high quality these products actually are because the fact that the wallet holds up to 12 cards is really damn handy on top of the other fact that the cash strap on the back is super simple to just slide cash into then put it into your pocket due to the minimalistic design which also at the same time when you pick these things up like you can tell that they're very professionally made. The key case is also the same too like it stops jingling of keys so it's like not annoying to you know pull out when you like say get out of your car and come home or whatever else you know you whip out this thing it's not annoying it stores them really clean and simple into your pocket and it can hold up to six keys so they're pretty damn good. I, I'm, I'm seriously like going on this hype about them because they actually are that good like you can just see them on the screen like this thing feels good. So what are you waiting for? Use my link in the description of this video or use the link that you can see on the screen, Clyde2022, and get up to 40% off until December 22nd. Make sure to use my link because it actually helps me a lot. Buy yourself something cool and show The Ridge some love. Trust me, their wallets and key cases are quality. Thanks to The Ridge for supporting my channel. Once more, it's all linked below. Also, Christmas is coming up, so keep it in mind. Oh, and uh, one more thing, guys. So uh, this isn't the next video I'm working on, but... Uh, it's on the way. Kent Kaijin.